very much. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and this is Pointless. The quiz show where the lower scorers are the biggest winners. To stay in the game, our contestants need to score as few points as possible. And the way they do that is by giving those little-known answers that no one else can remember. We've asked all our questions on Pointless to 100 people before the show. All our contestants have to do is find those obscure answers that as few of our 100 people gave as possible. So, for example, we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many countries with a population larger than the UK as they could. And we found out that 97 of them said the USA, an obvious answer that would score you a horribly high 97 points. However, only 39 of them said Brazil, a less obvious country that would score you a respectably low 39 points. Now, occasionally, there are even some answers that none of our 100 people could name. So, for example, none of them said Ethiopia, so that would have been a truly pointless country. And that would score you... ..absolutely nothing. You see, that is just what you want. And if you find any of those, then we will add £250 to today's jackpot. Right, let's meet today's players. Karen and Pete, welcome back. We give everyone two chances to reach the pointless final, and today is your final chance. Can you remind us where you're from and how you two know each other? Um, well, Pete's actually my brother-in-law. He's been married to my sister Julie for nine years now. Very good. How did you get on? How far did you go? We went out in the third round. That's right, just before the head-to-head. -head. Well, better luck this afternoon. Thank you. Michelle and Ivor, you are the second pair today. Welcome to the show. How do you two know each other? This is my favourite daughter, Michelle. Your favourite daughter? Well, my only daughter. I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> dear, oh dear, there are three girls in there who are just looking really disappointed <laughs> in the audience, thinking, oh, Dad. Well, the very best of luck to both of you. Thank you. Paul and Mark, welcome back. This is your second and final chance as well on Pointless. Remind us how you two know each other. Uh, we've been friends about a year and a half. We met at a beer festival when I was tricked into dressing up as a pirate. Oh, it's tricked now, <laughs> is it? Can I see? How do they do that? Make you walk the plank? Someone said he was a pirate-themed party when it in fact yeah, wasn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been to several parties like that. <laughs> anyway, Paul and Mark, very best of luck to you. Uh, welcome to Daniel and John. How do you two know each other? I used to work with John and he was the best man at my wedding. Splendid. What did you work as? Um, John was the manager of a betting shop and I was his deputy. Good. Well, let's hope we have some good horse racing questions, maybe, coming yeah, up. OK, welcome back, Henry and Toby. This is your second and final time on the show. Remind us how you do know each other. We, uh, we do our bit for the environment by car sharing. We've done that for about <laughs> ten years now, since uh, Toby gave me a push one time and he's never let me forget about it ever since. Very good. That was, a, that was a push worth giving. Best of luck to you this afternoon. Of course, there is one final person I have to introduce to you all. He is the man with all the pointless facts and figures. He's my pointless friend. It's Richard. <laughs> Richard, you know what sort of a show we have this afternoon. Yeah, I know all the questions and I've also got all the answers here. And as we go along after each question, I'll be letting you know what all the pointless answers were. Those are the things that none of our hundreds said. I'll also be going through the most obvious things, the, the answers you should avoid. If you're playing along at home, I'll give you all the information you need at the end of each question. Uh, always point out, you don't know any of the questions or any of the answers on today's show. That look of sort of hapless cluelessness <laughs> is actually completely natural. 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 That's the look I was born I think with. it's going to be a, a great show today. We've got some really, really good returning pairs. Excellent. The jackpot hasn't been won in the last six shows, so it rolls over. And today's jackpot total stands at an incredible... £8,750. <laughs> and we really are hoping that one of our pairs will be taking it home at the end of today's show. And remember, if you find some pointless answers along the way, each one of those will add £250 to that amount. Bearing all that in mind, let's play Pointless. <laughs> OK, in the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. You will score one point for every one of the 100 people that gave that same answer. And remember, this is pointless. So you're trying to score as little as possible. You're trying to find those answers that nobody else gave. If anyone gives me an incorrect answer, they will score the maximum of 100 points, so please be careful. If you do give an incorrect answer, this will happen. You really don't want to see that. At the end of the round, your combined score will be totaled up and the highest scoring pair will be eliminated. Now, only two pairs will make it through to our head-to-head -head semi-final, obviously, so the pressure is on. 
Right, our first category is action heroes. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? Yeah. Okay. And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many feature films starring Sylvester Stallone as they could. Richard, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, we're looking for feature films made for cinema release for which Sylvester Stallone received an acting credit. A few things we won't accept. We won't accept TV films. We won't accept short films. Uh, anything that hasn't been released yet, we obviously won't accept. And also anything where Stallone played himself. But we do accept voice performances. Uh, there are 43 films on that list, and I can confirm Stallone has made a number of pointless films. <laughs> Right, Karen and Pete, before the show, you all drew lots, and today, it turns out, you will be starting us off. So, Pete, find a pointless Stallone film. OK. He played a wonderful character in Ants with a Z at the end of it. Ants is an animated film, and he was actually quite good. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Ants. That's the correct answer. It's good, it's good. Oh, it's brilliant. Well, that means that none of our 100 people said ants, and it adds £250 to today's jackpot, taking it up to a sucking great total of... £9,000. <laughs> well, we are entering new territory. That's the largest jackpot we've ever had. Richard, Ants, with yeah, a Z. Yeah, Ants, uh, Sylvester Sloan voiced over the character of a weaver. Well done, Pete and Karen. On to our next pair. Michelle, what are you going to say? I think I'm probably going to go to the extreme of a pointless answer and say Rambo. Remember, we are looking for the most obscure <laughs> films starring Sylvester Stallone. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Rambo. Well, that means 59 of our 100 people said Rambo. That gives you a score of 59. On to our next pair, Paul. I think he made a highbrow art film about arm wrestling, and he was called Over the Top. Oh, I like that knowledge. <laughs> over the Top. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Over the Top. It's good. None of our 100 people said over the top, and it adds another £250 to today's jackpot. The total is now £9,250. That's... That's an embarrassing sum of money. Richard, over the top. Yeah, I honestly thought, Paul, I was the only person in Britain to have seen over the top, but uh, <laughs> you, you've seen it, so I think it's just us two, because none of these 100 have. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's about professional arm wrestling. Many congratulations, Paul. Over the top was a pointless answer. On to our fourth pair. Daniel... We're looking for feature films starring Sylvester Stallone. The only one that comes to mind is probably one of the worst ones he did, which was uh, Judge Dredd. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Judge Dredd. It's not bad. Oh, it's good. <laughs> that means that 10 of our 100 people said Judge Dredd, and that gives Daniel and John a score of 10. Toby and Henry, what's it going to be? Cobra. Cobra. Splendid. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Cobra. It's good. Oh, it's good. <laughs> that means that three of our 100 people said Cobra. With one exception, I have to say, that is a very low-scoring round. OK, we're halfway <laughs> through it. Let's have a look at the scores and see how we're doing. Well, obviously, Karen and Pete and Paul and Mark are looking pretty safe there on zero points. Keep up that low scoring and you should be certain of getting through to the next round. 
Michelle and Iva, 59's got to be looking a little bit dangerous. You've got to try and see if you can find a pointless answer on the next pass and just hope everyone else scores as much as they can. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? We are looking for feature films starring Sylvester Stallone. Toby and Henry, you are on three. An impressive low score. To avoid becoming the high scorers and overtaking Ivor and Michelle on 59, you want to be scoring 55 or less with this answer. The red line here is your safety line. If you are below that red line, you are definitely safe and you are through to the next round. If you are above that red line, you become our high scorers and you risk leaving the show at the end of this turn. No pressure, Henry. I think he was in something called Stop or My Mama Will Shoot. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said Stop or My Mama Will Shoot. It's good enough. Possibly better than that. It's five. Look at that. That means five of our 100 people said stop or my mom will shoot. That takes your total up to eight and sees you comfortably through to the next round. OK, our next pair. John, you are currently on ten. The high scorers at the moment on 59 are Ivor and Michelle. To be absolutely safe, you want to be scoring 48 or less to avoid becoming the high scorers. What, John, what are you going to say? We're looking for feature films starring Sylvester Stallone. I think he starred in a Prisoner of War film called Escape to Victory, where he played a goalkeeper in a football team. Oh, very good. Let's see how many of our 100 people remembered that. Escape to Victory. It's the right answer. It's good enough. And better, look at that. That means only two of our 100 people remembered Escape to Victory. That takes your total up to 12 and sees you comfortably through to the next round. Our next pair, Mark and Paul. You are currently our joint low scorers on zero. Ivor and Michelle still the front runners there on 59 to be absolutely safe and be sure of going through to the next round. You want to be scoring 58 or less. What's it going to be, Mark? I think he was in a, a remake of a classic British film um, called Get Carter. Let's see how many of our 100 people said, get Carter. If it's an incorrect answer, you will, of course, score the maximum of 100 points. Let's see, get Carter. He was in it. And you're through. Very good. That brings your total up to three. A very impressive combined score, if I may say. <laughs> Ivor and Michelle. Do you remember what I said? You've got to hope everyone else scores as high as they possibly can, and you've got to try and score a pointless here. So, Ivor, no pressure. No pressure at all. Uh, I think he was in a film called The Specialist. Oh, that sounds like a pointless film to me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how many of our 100 people said The Specialist. It's a correct answer. None of our 100 people said the specialist, and it adds yet another £250 to today's already massive jackpot, taking it up to £9,500. <laughs> well, Ivor, that was very impressive. We've just got to hope that was good enough. You are still our highest scorers on 59, but it's not all over yet. Oh, Karen, Karen, Karen. In order to get through to the next round, you have to score 58 or less. If you score 59, there'll be a tie break. If you score over 59, you will be leaving the show. Just to pile the pressure on there, Karen. OK. Um, I don't know many Sylvester Sloan films, so I'm going to have to say cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said cliffhanger appropriately. <laughs> oh, it's good enough! <laughs> yeah. That means that 15 of our 100 people said cliffhanger. That takes your total up to a very impressive and low 15. Ivor and Michelle. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. You're, you scored pretty low. 59 as a combined score is not bad. But I I'm should afraid. have you have a daughter. 
<laughs> <laughs> you might have just let the cat out the bag there, Ivor. <laughs> Are you thinking of any others now? No. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Really, really? Well, Richard, surely you could think of some that could help them out of their, their predicament there. There are 15 pointless Sylvester Stallone movies. We've already had three from, uh, from Paul, Ivor and Pete. The specialist uh, we had from Ivor, which was with Sharon Stone. Uh, ants we had from Pete, where he plays Weaver, the, uh, the ant Nighthawks. Uh, over the top, we've had Paradise Alley, which he wrote, Rhinestone, which he wrote. Uh, they're both pointless films. <laughs> no Place to Hide, I, I know how he feels. The Party at Kitty and Studs. And, uh, and The Lords of Flatbush also was a, uh, was, was a pointless answer. Interestingly, the worst answer is the top ten, apart from Cliffhanger, Karen, which, uh, which you gave us, uh, it was all Rambo and Rocky. Third, it was uh, Rocky II. Second, Michelle, you've already given us uh, Rambo. And top, anybody? Rocky, Rocky. one. Rocky. Rocky, exactly right. Miles ahead. 79 points, that would have got your worst possible answer. Thanks, Rich. OK, Michelle and Iva, remember, everyone gets two chances to reach our pointless final. We have to say goodbye to you for today, but we'll see you next time for your last chance. But thanks so much for playing, you've been great. <laughs> for the remaining four pairs, though, it's time for round two. <laughs> OK, guys, and the round two category is... countries. Can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first and who's going to go second? Okay, go first again. And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. Now, remember, Pointless is all about scoring the fewest points. You're looking for those answers that the fewest of our 100 people said. With that in mind, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many countries beginning with M as they could. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any country whose English name begins with an M. By country, as always, we mean a sovereign state that's a member of the UN. Bearing all that in mind, Pete and Karen, you're first up. Pete. I think possibly Moldova. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Moldova. That means 19 of our 100 people said Moldova, and that gives Pete and Karen an early low score of 19. On to our next pair. Paul, what are you going to say? Okay, I think I'll say the African country Mauritania. Very good. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Mauritania. It's a correct answer. <laughs> Very good. That means only four of our 100 people said Mauritania. And that gives you a score of four onto our next pair. John, what are you going to say? Well, I'm going to stay in Africa and go for Mozambique. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Mozambique. It's good. Oh, it's good. That means 17 of our 100 people said Mozambique. That gives John and Daniel a score of 17. Henry and Toby. Henry, what are you going to say? OK, well, I'll just stick with Africa, I think, and say Mali. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Mali. Oh, it's good. <laughs> well, that means nine of our 100 people said Mali, and that gives Toby and Henry an impressively low score of nine. Well, we are halfway through the round. Let's take a look at the scoreboard, see how we're doing. Ooh, Paul and Mark, got to be feeling pleased with themselves. Low score of four there. Keep up that low scoring and you should be safely through to the next round. Things looking a little bit more dodgy for Karen and Pete up there on 19. You've got to hope everyone else scores high and you've got to try and find a really low, low scoring answer on the next pass. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Will the second players please take their places at the podium? <laughs> so we are looking for countries beginning with M. Toby and Henry, you are on nine. To avoid becoming the high scorers and risk being eliminated at the end of the round, you want to be scoring nine or less with this answer. There is the red line. You have to come below that red line. Good job this isn't limbo. You have to come below <laughs> that red line to ensure your place in the next round. I'm going to go with um, Malawi. Malawi. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said Malawi. 
That's a correct answer. Oh! That means 21 of our 100 people said Malawi. That brings your total up to 30. You are our current high scorers, but the game is not over yet. On to our next pair. Daniel and John, you're currently on 17. Toby and Henry are now our high scorers on 30. To avoid overtaking them and becoming the new high scorers, you want to be scoring 12 or less with this answer. We are looking for countries beginning with M. What's it going to be, Daniel? I'm going to go for Montserrat. Very good. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Montserrat. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's a wrong answer. That means you score the maximum of 100 points. That takes your total up to 117. And that's great news for Toby and Henry, great news for Mark and Paul. You're both definitely through to the next round. But Richard, Montserrat. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not a sovereign state or a member of the UN. It's actually it's a British overseas territory. It's one of ours. Oh, dear. I'm sorry, guys. On to the next pair. Mark and Paul, as I say, you can't lose. Even if you score the maximum of 100, you still won't overtake Daniel and John's high score of 117. So why not see if you can find another pointless answer there and add 250 quid to our total? Well, since we can't go out, I'll take a slight risk and I'll say Madagascar. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Madagascar. It's good. That means 33 of our 100 people said Madagascar. That takes your total up to 37. OK, Karen and Pete, you are currently on 19. Our high scorers at the moment are Daniel and John on 117. To avoid becoming the new high scorers, you have to score 97 or less. Karen, we are looking for countries beginning with M. OK, well, my initial thought was Madagascar, but that's been taken away now. Initial thought? So I'm going to go with Malta. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Malta. Good. Very good. That means 26 of our 100 people said Malta. That takes your total up to 45 and sees you comfortably in the next round. So at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score are Daniel and John. Bad luck. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, John, you said Mozambique. Lovely low score of 17. Thought we were going to way there. <sighs> But Richard, what other answers could they have given? There weren't any pointless answers, actually. There, there, there were a couple of very, very low ones. Uh, if we take a look, there's two island groups in the Pacific, the Marshall Islands and Micronesia. They're, they're both just north of Papua New Guinea. And a bit closer to home, Montenegro would have scored you two points. Thanks, Richard. OK, Daniel and John, you've wasted one of your chances to get through to the pointless final, so we have to say goodbye for today. But we'll see you next time for your last chance. Thanks so much for playing. But for the remaining three pairs, it's time for round three. <laughs> Obviously, only two pairs will make it through to the head-to-head, -head, so this is your final chance. All of you need to find those low-scoring answers to stay in the game. The round three category is... Currency. OK, so who's going first, who's going second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many people on English banknotes since 1960 as they could. Richard. I bet there isn't a single person at home who hasn't just reached into their pocket or opened a purse. <laughs> Fictional characters don't count. So you couldn't have Danger Mouse, for example, if you wanted. <laughs> Thanks, Rich. Now, remember, you need to score the fewest points. You need to give the answer that the fewest of our 100 people said. OK, Pete, what's it going to be? I'm going to go for the first lady to make it a lady on both sides of the banknote, and that's Elizabeth Fry. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Elizabeth Fry. It's the right answer. Oh, she's good. She's very good. 11 of our 100 people said Elizabeth Fry, and that gives Pete and Karen a total of 11. Richard, Elizabeth Fry. Yeah, Elizabeth Fry, as pretty much everyone at home would have worked out in the last 30 seconds, is on the current £5 note. Very well done. On to our next pair, Paul. I think I may have seen Charles Dickens, so I'll have to go. Charles Dickens. You're going to go with Charles Dickens. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Charles Dickens. 
That's the correct answer. Not bad. That means 12 of our 100 people said Charles Dickens. That gives Paul and Mark a score of 12. OK, Henry, what are you going to say? We are looking for people on English banknotes since 1960. It's a risky one, but I can't think of another. Um, Jack Nicholas, a golfer. <laughs> was on a, a commemorative five-pound note. Nicholas on a commemorative five-pound note. Oh, let's hope that little loophole gets you out of hot water. <laughs> <laughs> let's see how many of our 100 people said Jack Nicholas. Fortunately, that is a wrong answer, and that means you score the maximum of 100 points. Richard, Jack Nicholas. Well, Jack Nicholas was on a, he was on a commemorative note, but from the Bank of Scotland, not an English banknote. So, so that's bad luck. Hmm, bad luck. OK, we are halfway through the round. Let's see where we are on the scoreboard. So our lower scorers are Karen and Pete on 11. Keep up the good work and you will be going through to the next round. Henry and Toby, such bad luck there. You are our highest scorers on the maximum of 100. OK, we are coming back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? So, Toby, we are looking for people on English banknotes since 1960. You are currently at 100. You've got to try and find a pointless answer here, if you can. I'm going to say um, the Lady of the Lamp, Florence Nightingale. Florence Nightingale. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Florence Nightingale. <laughs> that means 35 of our 100 people said Florence Nightingale. And that takes Toby and Henry's score up to a high of 135. I'm afraid that means you will be eliminated at the end of this round, as even if the remaining pairs score the maximum of 100, they will not overtake your high score. However, for the remaining pairs, there are several pointlesses, I'm sure, out there to be found, and each one will add £250 to our jackpot. So, on to our next pair. Mark. I think I've seen Sir Christopher Wren on the banknote. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Sir Christopher Wren. That's good. Very good. Oh. That. that means only nine of our 100 people said Sir Christopher Wren. That takes your score up to 21. And finally, Karen. Um, it's a bit of a shot in the dark, but I think um, Brunel might have been on a pound note at some point. Brunel. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Brunel. Bad luck. Unfortunately, that is a wrong answer, which means you score the maximum of 100 points. That takes your total up to 111. So, at the end of round three, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm afraid, is Henry and Toby. Guys, that was such bad luck. Well, Win some, you lose some. If you had another chance, um, any other people you're thinking of now? Uh, I'm kicking myself now. I probably would have said something like Marie Curie. I think maybe she's on one. Mm. Richard, what should they have said? Well, I feel a bit better because Marie Curie would also have got 100 points. So I don't, now I don't feel quite so guilty. Well, there was one point this answer, and that was Sir John Hublon, who was, he was the first governor of the Bank of England. And I think the reason why nobody knows it is he's on the current £50 note. So if anyone at home does know that, uh, well, good luck to you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, next up, Michael Faraday, who uh, used to be on the £20 note, and then Sir Edward Elgar would have got you five points. He's currently on the, the sort of older style of the new £20 note. If we take a look at the, uh, the worst answers you possibly could have given, uh, Isaac Newton was said he used to be on our, our old friend, the £1 note. Uh, Florence Nightingale, we've already had, she used to be on the, the £10 note, and you can probably guess the worst answer of all, she's on every single bank note, Queen Elizabeth II. <laughs> Thanks, Rich. Henry and Toby, that was your second and final chance on the show. You just don't have that pointless currency knowledge you needed to get through to the final. So I'm afraid we have to say goodbye. But thanks so much for playing. You've been great. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> uh, 
Well done, Paul and Mark, Karen and Pete. You've made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for today's jackpot, which currently stands at... £9,500. <laughs> OK, here's how the head-to-head -head works. You are now allowed to confer. Each team will take turns to give me an answer, and you'll each have an equal number of turns. The first team that accumulates more than 100 points or the team that goes over 100 by the most will lose. So, as always, to stay in the game, you want to score as few points as possible by saying those answers that the fewest of our 100 people gave. OK, Paul and Mark, you have performed best over the first three rounds, so not only do you get to decide whether or not you go first, you also get to choose our topic. And your choice is between British Geography or Football Championships. Championships. Could we have Football Championships, please? Of course you can. And would you like to go first or second? First, please. You're going to go first, and you're going to have Football Championships. OK, let's play Pointless. <laughs> Right, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many countries that have hosted the European Championships as they could. Richard, we need to know more. Yeah, we're looking for the name of any country who have hosted the UEFA European Championships since it started in 1960. It used to be the, uh, the European Nations Cup, more commonly now they call it the Euros, but any of those countries since 1960. Now, remember, you don't want to go over 100 points. So you want to be scoring the lowest number of points each time. What are those countries that have hosted the European Championships that nobody else could think of? Paul and Mark, your turn to go first. Can we have Sweden, please? Sweden. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Sweden. It's a correct answer. Oh, it's good. Very good. That means 11 of our 100 people said Sweden. That means after one answer, your score is 11. OK, Karen and Pete, your first answer, please. Um, we're going to say Austria. Austria. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Austria. It's a correct answer. Good. That means six of our 100 people said Austria. So, one answer each. Paul and Mark are on 11. Karen and Pete are on 6. OK. Paul and Mark, you need to be careful now. Your next answer could possibly take you over 100 points and you would risk leaving the game. So, your next answer needs to score 89 or less. What's it going to okay, be? OK, could we have Belgium, please? Let's see how many of our 100 people said Belgium. Not bad. <laughs> that means 18 of our 100 people said Belgium. That takes your total after two answers to 29. Karen and Pete, after one answer, you're on six. We want your second answer now. To avoid going over 100, you need to score 94 or less. What are those countries that have hosted the European Championships? Shot in the dark here. We hope that Spain have hosted it. If you get a wrong answer, you will, of course, score 100. That will take you over 100, and you will be straight off the game. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Spain. Good. Oh. That means 52 of our 100 people said Spain. That takes your total up to 58 after your second answer. OK, you've each answered twice. Paul and Mark are on 29, Karen and Peter on 58. Paul and Mark, your third answer, please. We're going to go for Switzerland. You're going to go for Switzerland. You are currently on 29. To avoid going over 100, you need to score 71 or less. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Switzerland. Good. means only four of our 100 people said Switzerland. That takes your total after three answers to 33. OK, Karen and Pete, you are currently on 58. You have to score 42 or less to avoid going over 100. If you do go over 100, you will be straight off the game. 
There is your red line. You have to come below that red line to avoid going over 100. Uh, Portugal. Portugal. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Portugal. It's good. That means 23 of our 100 people said Portugal. That takes your total after three answers up to 81. You're now on three answers apiece. The scores are Paul and Mark on 33, Karen and Pete on 81. What are those countries that have hosted the European Championships that nobody else could think of? Paul and Mark, your fourth answer, please. Um, we're going to go for the Netherlands. OK, you're going to go for the Netherlands. To avoid going over 100, you need to score 67 or less. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the Netherlands. OK. And it's good. That means 22 of our 100 people said the Netherlands. That takes your total up to 55. OK, Karen and Pete, we need your fourth answer. You are currently on 81. To avoid going over 100, you have to score 19 or less. Paul and Mark have now given four answers. This is your fourth answer. You're going second, so this takes you over 100. You are straight off the show. Um, Germany. <laughs> Germany. <laughs> Let's see how many of our 100 people said Germany. Well, you've had four turns each, and Karen and Pete, you have gone over 100 points. I'm afraid to say that means you are off the show. You were doing so well there for a minute or two. You're not, not really football fans. Uh, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> You forget where they were held. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's true, you do. You There's do. a mixture between World Cups as well. We're saying, you know, France, that was 98, that was, that was World Cup. Italian, yes. 90, you know, so we're just yeah. trying to sort it out between us. Richard, what other answers should they have been looking for? Well, th there was one point in this answer. Uh, in 1976, the championships were hosted by Yugoslavia. Czechoslovakia beat West Germany in the final, to the delight of all. Uh, and Austria and Switzerland, we've already had. They, of course, co-hosted it in uh, 2008, where Spain beat Germany, to the delight of all again. <laughs> to look at the worst answers you possibly could have given. Karen and Pete, you've already given us two of these. Uh, <laughs> the third worst answer was, uh, was Spain. Second was France. And uh, you gave us the worst answer, which was Germany. Well, there you are. Thanks, Richard. Karen and Pete, that was your second and final chance on the show. I'm afraid you just clearly don't have that pointless football knowledge you needed to get through to the final, so I'm afraid we do have to say goodbye. But thanks so much for playing. You've been great. Thank you. <laughs> but for Paul and Mark, it's time for our pointless final. So, congratulations, Paul and Mark. You've fought off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. <laughs> Very good. Now you've got the chance to win our pointless jackpot. Nobody's won the jackpot for the last six shows. So, at the end of today's show, the jackpot currently stands at an amazing £9,500. <laughs> Our biggest jackpot yet. OK, the rules are very simple. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer that none of our 100 people could think of. Now, we've had three pointless answers today, one of which was given by you, Paul. All you've got to do is find another one. First, you need to choose a category from these three options, and you can go for the Beijing Olympics, radio personalities, or award-winning authors. Um. Beijing Olympics. Could be anything but. We're both into sport, though, aren't we? Yeah. I think that might be the one. Should we go for that one? Yep, could we take the Beijing Olympics, please? OK. You're going to take the Beijing Olympics. So we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many British gold medal winners in Beijing as they could. Richard. Yep, we're looking for the name of any British athlete who won a gold medal for Great Britain at the Beijing Olympics. There were a very impressive 27 of them. You now have up to one minute to come up with three answers. All you need to do to win that £9,500 
is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Your 60 seconds start now. OK, we've got cycling. Um, Chris Hoy, but he's too obvious. Victoria Pendleton. Victoria Pendleton, Victoria Nicola Cook, Mark Cavendish, I think. The guy called Jason Kenny, it could be one. Mark Jason. Cavendish didn't win, I'll just Did he not? OK, <laughs> OK. Um, Jason Kenny, I think, could be one for us. What about the sailors? Sailors. I called Ian Percy, wasn't it? Ian Percy, tremendous. Ian Percy. Uh, we've got Tim Brabant, was he the role with the doctor guy with the bald head? With the kayaking. Yeah. yeah we'll, sure. um, we'll, definitely, we'll definitely go for it. Tim Brabant. Christina Hurugu won one, but she's too common. Not common in life. No, she's a. <laughs> I don't know. She may be, I don't know. Um, Tim Brabant. Tim Brabant. Ian Percy. Yeah. And what was his name? Jason. Jason Kenny. Brabant Percy. Five seconds. Kenny. Brabant Percy. Kenny. Time's up. OK. Sounds like you've got your three answers. Yeah, we've got plenty, but it's whether, just, whether they're going to be pointless or not. But we're going to say Tim Brabant's. Tim Brabant's. Um, Ian Percy. Ian Percy. And Jason Kenny. And Jason Kenny. Let's put those up on the board. Come on. <laughs> there they are. Tim Brabant's. Ian Percy. Jason Kenny. Let's go with your first answer. OK, this is for the biggest jackpot we've ever had on Pointless. Nine and a half thousand pounds. This has to be a Pointless answer. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Tim Brabant's. OK, come on, Tim Brabant's, down you go. £9,500. This has to be pointless. Yes! 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 Congratulations. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Congratulations. You managed to find that all important pointless answer. That means you go home with the jackpot of £9,500. Guys, that was incredible. So, Richard, Tim Brabant. Yeah, very impressive. Dr Tim, he won the 1,000 metre freshwater kayak. Uh, just looking at your other two answers, uh, Ian Percy, who won the, uh, the, the star class, the keelboat star class, uh, he would have scored you zero as well. He was also a pointless answer. <laughs> very impressive, two pointless answers. <laughs> and just to clear things up, Jason Kenny, who is one of the, uh, the team sprint cyclists, uh, he would have got you... Zero as well. He was also a pointless <laughs> answer. Three pointless answers. Fantastic. The hat trick. <laughs> well, congratulations. Uh, you go into the pointless history books <laughs> today. Uh, not only our biggest jackpot winners, but uh, also worthy winners there by getting the hat trick. All three of your final answers were pointless. That's <laughs> fantastic. You've been fantastic contestants. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Brilliant. So, Paul and Mark won today's jackpot. Join us next time when we put more obscure knowledge and forgotten facts to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And goodbye from me. Goodbye. Goodbye.